Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our final word for the week um, after the games that were on Friday night. Um, the game that I was at myself was Rovers and Dundalk in Tallis Stadium. Yourself and Ryan. Yeah, that's right. And it ended up being uh, nil all. Um, I suppose the atmosphere was very good at the game, as to be expected, like because it was because yeah. it was such well, a Well, they have game. the new south stand there, and that's where all the ultras go now. And so obviously, mm. they're. I, I assume that they're they're trying to get the atmosphere there. Mm. You know, they they want that to be like their their cop, so to speak, mm. or their Stratford M type of thing. I think that's that's the idea behind that new south stand. They they I, I assume that they want to have that as you know, say they're they're losing in the uh, in the second half. They want to be shooting into that goal, and as the old saying goes, the south stand's going to suck the ball in. I think that's the way that's the way yeah. they Rovers would be looking at that, you know, and. Uh, you know, in fairness, you know, we're obviously just back from, from a match just there, you know. It was decent yeah. Decent showing for for a Monday night. We'll come we'll come back to that at the end. But uh yeah, I mean look like I was at Rovers the week before against Derry, it was a good atmosphere, the South Stand opened and I thought thought it was very good, but uh, how how did they how did the, the atmosphere affect the game at all? Very good. Well um there was a lot of um, there was there was a lot of things that were going on in crowd in terms of the way that Rob was playing um, from from being in the crowd sitting with them um, and that was that uh, because you know the dark in with the season take a hold of <laughs> basically and with, with around them um, I realised that a lot of them were happy with the way that they're playing uh, in terms of the way Rob was playing following on from the Bowes game because. Um, Obviously, they were playing Bowes, top of the league, and then they played Dundalk. And both teams very organised. And they seem to, as I said before, rotate the ball left to right, and they can't penetrate through the lines. And what's happening is um, the defenders are getting the ball, the front three, so the middle, whatever, whoever it is at the time, green, left winger, right winger, stay high and wide, and then eventually, instead of trying to pen penetrate through the lines, they're trying to think it over the top. And fans seem to be getting very frustrated by that. Um, the dark weren't that great, uh, you know. They, they created a few chances, but I'd probably say it's fair to say probably Rovers had the, the better of the chances. Um, a lot of the fans weren't happy with the referee uh, as well. A couple of viral fans. Uh, yeah, yeah, but a lot of fans I was sitting around. They were kind of just a lot of them were very fed up um, about how bad this team is playing at the moment. Um, I can see frustration from both sides uh, because obviously he wants them to play a certain way mm. and um, it doesn't see, I think a lot of teams are starting to get very, very compact in the middle when they're playing against the Rovers now and it's kind of very hard for them to break people down. Um, but they don't have a lot of natural width as well, Yeah, uh, which doesn't help because, you know, ideally you're thinking... Jack Byrne, he's more of a centre midfielder and he kind of likes to obviously drift into that central spot mm -hmm. rather than go take on the full-back. Yeah. You know, whether he's on the left or he's on the right or whatever, because mm. sometimes he's starting on the left and I don't know because you were at the game. Yeah. I don't know whether he was left or right because I'm sure Carr was in there as well. Yeah. Uh, and then the killer for them with the width was Boyle not being able to play. So... Uh, John Bowen probably was that's right, yeah, sorry. Um, so, Joy O'Brien, uh, well, he's still playing centre-back, but um, he had to go right-back against Bowes. But um, because people who are going in right-back and natural right-backs, they're usually where their width comes from. Um, so, they're probably doing the opposite, they're going back in. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of, that's a lot of what I was hearing then in the crowd, was people saying that there was no width and all these different things. Whereas, I suppose, against Finn Harps, when they won, there was a bit of width, and they were able then to penetrate through the lines that way, like... Um, but yeah, on the on the on the judge of it, really, um, it was the third game in seven days for both teams. Um, they had had a, a, a quite a, a tight game against Bowes, big atmosphere at that. So I can imagine that it was quite flat. Um, not many chances were created and things like that. Um, so yeah, I suppose nil was 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 fair. Yeah, um, but talk to me about Dundalk because I haven't seen them play this season. So yeah. uh, you know. Um, what was their performance like? You know, they just they got the, they finally got the the win. Mm. Hoover was off the mark. Duffy was off the mark. I thought they were really going to kick on, but as you say, there's a lot of games in, in a short space space of days. It's kind of almost how like Pat Hoover got his kind of preseason last because he had so many games in quick succession. Yeah. You know, so for me, yeah, I think it, it was only after a second or third game he kind of got into the team, mm -hmm. and never really looked back last season. You know, he obviously got off the mark penalty or whatever, but you know, from a Dundalk point of view how did they set up 
Um, well, they had a lot with themselves. Now they uh, they had spells of joy. Um, there was times where they it, it was kind of a, a game of moments. There was fifteen minute spell for Rovers where they did the ball mm, and they might and then it would change. Um, they were trying to get the ball wide quite a lot, and um, they they did have one or two very good chances. There was one very very good chance that came from a corner um, where they probably should have scored uh, from a bit of poor defending from Rovers. But apart from that, um, there was there was maybe maybe one one other really good chance. Like they, they did have a bit of ball, they had a few half chances, but realistically, um, most of the joy was coming from the right hand side. So um, Patrick mm. Hoban was kind of at times isolated, um, so I can understand why. Do you know what I mean? He, there was probably a lack of goals the last few weeks. Do you know what I mean? In lack of service. Of, yeah, lack of service, you know. Um, so, yeah, like realistically, as I said, it's hard to judge it than Dock right now because although Rovers was a, was a good team for them to play uh, in respect of other people that have been playing, it's really hard to know how they're going to kick on. I don't know. It's it's very hard to judge because that's the only time I've seen them. Yeah. Well, it's fair enough. I mean, it's yeah. still early in, in the season. You know, I know games yeah. are coming thick and fast because of the Friday Monday thing, but it is it is hard. To, and, and they were slow starters last mm. season, and then once they got going, they just, just glided through the rest of the season. You know, and they were mm. they're fantastic to watch. And I, I hope they hit their stride soon because I love watching them play when they're mm. in the you know the full motion. But um, it's, it's one of those leagues where just it's just all about momentum. Whatever team just picks that. Bit of momentum up, they, they just break away very quickly, you know. Uh, like you know, patch a second there, and then they drew then against UCD on Friday. Um, Mikey Jam, another goal. Bowes, Bowes beat Rovers, and then they drew on Friday as well. Do you know what I mean? So, like, it's just literally you pick up a couple of someone just picked up a couple of wins now over the, that last week. They could be first, but they could be ahead by four or five points, you know. Yeah, but uh, Alex was down covering the game down in uh, Cork. Mm. Uh, against Derry and there was a couple of familiar faces down there with uh, Barry McNamee back uh, against his old club and stuff like that but you know from from him speaking to Darren uh, Darren Murphy from Fans Voice TV if you don't know Darren check out his stuff it's a pretty good podcast and he's a nice fella so check him out uh, he was basically saying you know Cork they're showing signs that they they're gonna kind of come alive but he he says he thinks it's going to take about three games for them to kind of really get going and you know from a dairy perspective again uh, I kind of I, I see why they're not creating as many chances the, the team are still getting used to each other it's a new manager it's a new players coming in there we still think you know that they were saying that they never really replaced Roy Patterson I do think Owen Stokes would be a very good player for them I think he will set scoring goals for them he obviously scored two on the first game of the season it's UCD, but it's weird when it's like everyone's beating everyone, everyone's drawn with everyone, so it's just a weird kind of string of results. That's yeah. why I'd never be a fan of doing, you know, like an accumulator for the League of Ireland. Yeah. People always ask me for predictions. I was like, mate, I can't, I can't predict the League of Ireland. It's too hard. It is. It's too hard. You don't know. You don't know who's going to be who. You know, anyone can can get a point off anyone on any given day. Like you look at Finn Harps, they got points against Dundalk and other teams like that. Um, Sligo drew it. Dundalk first game of the season, didn't they? Yeah, so pe- people pick up points that you just you wouldn't expect. You would have expected Dundalk to, to you know beat them like at the first game of the season and whatever. So it's it's just kind of it's, it's kind of weird like that. But like look, every single game I, I've seen Cork twice this season. But every single game that I've come away and listened to a fan and speak, they've all spoke very highly of Darrell O'Connor, who signed from UCD in the summer, and. Saying how like he's been brilliant, his 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 forms encouraging, his uh, you know the fact that he's more direct. Uh, I think Darren said that he wanted him maybe to see him as more of a maybe number ten rather than a wide player. But I thought when he came on against Dundalk in the Presidents Cup, I thought he really really caused some problems in the second half, and they didn't really know a lot, you know how to handle him Dundalk. They were two 0 up already, so they didn't really have to worry about him. But then uh, Kevin O'Connor got the free kick or whatever, and I'm still kind of talking about that because so. That was the only bit where they were quite impressed. They weren't that good against Pats when I seen them. I, I expected more from them, considering it's you know it's the team that finished runners up in both the league and cup last year. I did expect better from them. I know they lost players, like real good quality like Kieran Sadler, and 
you know, McNamee, I think, is a very good player as well. He didn't seem to settle in Cork for whatever reason. Maybe he didn't get on with the manager or whatever. But, uh, you know, they, they they got the win against Sligo last week. So you're thinking that they were going to kick on from there. But yeah. for whatever reason, they just didn't. And, you know, nil-nil, from hearing both, it was a Derry fan interview and a, and a Cork fan. It sounded like it was a fairly even game. And there's not really much we can kind of say on that, really. Like... Do what, what do you think uh, Cork's biggest issue is? Uh, a lot of people have been saying to me that just they're really struggling to create chances to score goals. I don't know if would you agree with that? Yes, in yeah. a way. I don't, you know, like when Graham we Cummins was, was, was good yeah. uh, last season, very early on. He was very good scoring goals or whatever. But they've, they've Nash and Tilly there. And they seem to be excited by these players, but it's. It's again. There's a lot of there's a lot of teams lost a lot of players, and there's a lot of new players coming into teams, and they need time to gel to get used to one another. Yeah. To know like if someone's gonna get the ball, if they're gonna play it into the area in which that player wants, knowing where that player's gonna run, and the only way they're gonna do it, you can't really pick that up in training. I don't think anyway. It's it is playing matches with one another. You kind of get used to okay. Well, he's gonna make that run in there. You know, he's gonna make that run, or this guy makes. Uh, extravagant runs and you know sometimes you can pick him out or whatever he can, he can he can hit a diagonal ball in behind and he's going to make that run to get onto it some of the players probably don't know what others are capable of, if that makes sense mm-hmm. and yeah it's just I think it's a matter I think as Darren said I think three games in we, we'll probably see them kind of get back into a little bit of form mm-hmm. you know what I mean the way the results are going, no one's really running away. With it. You know, we're no, talking no. now, Dundalk, or sorry, uh, Rovers are top of the league. I know they've, they played a game tonight. Yeah, goal difference ahead of Bowes, yeah. Yeah, Pats tonight. as well. So, yeah. you know what I mean? It's 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 Everyone can beat everyone, everyone mm-hmm. can get a draw off everyone. You know, it's, and look, Waterford and Bowes is just a game we move on to now. You know, Waterford's, I think, are, are a, good th- a very good side. You know, they proved it last season when they came up. They finished fourth. They were third for a majority of the season. They caused teams a lot of hassle. They beat Cork. They beat Dundalk. They have one of the best players in the league with Bastian Heary, centre mid. You know, I think he was player of the week last week. Um, and they're, he, they're kind of like that team. Like, they just, especially away games, they just love turning up and spoiling the party. Like, do you know what I mean? It seems yeah. that they always do so well in a game away from home where they're expecting not to win. Or they're a team yeah. I actually really like, and I really yeah. like them because you know I like their supporters. Supporters are big, big fans of the show. Um, same with Bowes now. Don't get me wrong. We'll, we'll come on to them in a second. But as well as that, it's just they just, they just seem like a good club. Like I, yeah. I, I, I want to get down to the RSC for a game this year. Just I've seen them away at home a few times. And, mm. No, well, even with the, and, and I know a few of their players or whatever, but you know, I, I do always kind of want to see them do well, and you know, I always wish them mm. well. Whoever they're playing, now, I don't know much about the game. It's nil all. Doesn't sound very exciting, but you know, it's a good point mm. for Bowes in my opinion because the RSC is a hard place to go. Bowes have Bowes are unbeaten now. I think that's a, uh, the James Talbot's fourth clean sheet in a row. Yeah. So. You know, defensively they're doing something right. You know, it's a and it's it's a very young back four, and their keeper is is you know I seen something in the paper where he was kind of you know signing for Bowes kind of helped him through depression. So this is a young lad coming from Sunderland who didn't seem to kind of get the mm. rub of the green for whatever reason. Um, came back home. I, I, I think he was playing Gaff for for a little while. And then uh, you know Shane Supple retires, and you know big big gloves. I suppose I was going to say boots, but big gloves to fill in in Shane Supple, and he's come in. He's been superb so far, and you know I know Rovers were sent down to ten men the last week, but you know never really looked tested. That was the only game I seen him in, and look just yeah. commanding, came for the ball. You know, looks like a young tough kid from yeah. North, North Dublin. I think they're organised, but I think I think. Um I think Bowes are really going to struggle to score goals this season against anyone who's top five. Well, Dinny's, top Dinny's flying. I think he's got three out of four. Yeah, and, and but just from well, now this is me only going off like the, the role was given there from what I was watching. But I just I could just tell um, from the from the style of play that they have, the personnel that they have. I think that they will against teams that are either organised or are going to have a little bit more of the ball than them I think they're, they're really going to really going to struggle um, 
Corkin seems to be someone who's they're constantly trying to feed the ball to. So if the keeper has our back four, they're trying to hit a long term and mm. play off him. And um, a lot of the times, the issue is that um, unless it's another striker coming off him, the two wingers are too wide anyway to, to get involved. And then when the wingers are involved in it, um, up to there, their main objective is then to whip it into Corkin. I'm not saying that's that's a that's a bad game plan or anything like that. Um, what I'm saying is when you're organised uh, or when a team has a lot of the other, a lot of the ball and would play with a lot of width, that they take the wings completely out of the game. You know, um, I just feel like at times it's it, from what I was watching, I felt it was a little bit one dimensional. Do you know what I mean? Even when Rovers went down to ten men, um, and I understand that, you know, they did still create a chance from wide areas, but um, I think it was more so not because they went down ten men, but more so because Joy O'Brien had to go right back. Do you know what I mean? Um, and Ward was getting a lot yeah, of yeah. Joy. Like, do you know what I mean? So I just feel that um, I, I just can I can just see it like them struggling to to score goals. That's just my opinion there, but from what I can see, um, well, the one player who I think has been a great signing for them and uh, he's friends with Army Django is Conor yeah. Levinson, and a lot of Bulls fans are really really happy with how he settled in. He's oh yeah, for yeah, Wolves. yeah. Uh, Wexford man from Gorey. He uh, did well, yeah. He seems to be, you know, flying and he's really setting into that team. And Spoke to him at the end of the game. Yeah, we did yeah. against against Rovers. No, really nice guy and he'll probably be on the show in the next couple yeah. of weeks. He said he'd never seen an atmosphere like it, uh, yeah. ever. The uh, Bowles and Rovers game. Yeah. He couldn't believe it yeah, when he came off. Yeah. yeah, but again, look, Bowles still unbeaten and, you know, great, great result for them uh, going away to... The RSC, yeah. which is a tough place to go, no matter who you are, yeah. and uh, teams will struggle down there. So another, uh, I suppose, it's a good point for both teams. You know, mm-hmm. it was both were top of the league at the time, and yeah. when, when they were, running. and to be fair, they lost Dan Casey as well. He was a very, very important player last season to Cork, and he's, he, you know, they've. You can only say good things about them. To be fair, from a defensive point of view, Keith Long, he lost a good spine of his team, and. So far, so good. They've 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 been great and they've surprised everyone. I'd say I'd say they've I'd even go so far as if to say they surprised their own supporters. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I would say that anyway. Uh, moving on to Pats and UCD, Mikey Drennan again. Uh, he seems to be scoring for fun. I'm delighted for him. You know, he just he went through a hard time with the, uh, you know, mental health and, and and those types of issues. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's nice to see him in the score scoring run. You know, he got a bit of abuse against Sligo or whatever. Football's football, and fans are fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, UCD, they're not struggling for goals, are they? Like even the games that they're losing, they seem to be yeah. competing and, and getting on the score sheet. Um, well, Connor Davis, because he he was yeah. he was banging them in last season to get them up when they lost Georgie Kelly, so. Uh, it's good to see him scoring goals. Seems like a very nice fella as well. So, yeah, I mean, the, it's a it's a great result for UCD. I don't think it's a great result for St Pat's. Now, I'm not saying no that uh, like once again the same thing again. They could have kicked on. Yeah, to the second in the league. They, that was their chance. To, yeah, well, you would have thought Pat, did, Pat's were thinking we want to make a statement here. Just like. Harry Kenny, new manager again, but this is so many new teams. Like, you know what I mean? You don't know when actually a team's going to hit that just that purple patch mm. and just there. You know, excuse me. It's still a, it's still very early. So you're kind of looking at it and you're like, all right, well they had, they got so many new signings or whatever. Drennan's been fantastic for them, yeah. and they, defensively they've they've been quite solid. Because as far as I remember, against Cork it was one nil. They won like another game one nil. That was one all, and. Um, you know, I think David Webster was a great signing for them from Waterford. He was playing Bowes. Or I say Rovers. So someone's going to go mad at me in the comments there for that. But, uh, no, uh, you know, he's a big character, I think. And, you know, he seems to have settled in well as well. And, you know, um, getting Brendan Clark back in goal then as well. He signed the back end last season as well. He seems to be, you know, really loving life back there as well. And... You know, from uh, Pat's point of view, the only thing is, as as good as they've been defensively, they need to start adding more goals. They, they need to start um, having more midfielders getting on the score sheet and kind of adding in to, to Drennan's goals, you know. So that's that's kind of how I'm feeling about Pat's. Again, another team I really like. I, mean, I like the majority of teams in the 
in the league. To be fair, I I just like going like I do like going down to Richmond, and I'll probably end up going to Richmond this this week. Hopefully that will be game. hopefully that be a good game. I think uh, it will. I think yeah, both yeah. sides kind of. The fact that it's a it's a derby as well is is that there'd be challenges flying in and you know I think you know anyone who kind of goes hiding will get found out and it, it always proves to be a good game I mean and you never know who's going to win I remember last year Pat's hopped off Rovers Joey O'Brien got sent off and then uh, Pat's went to Tala and got hopped off by Rovers Graham Burke was brilliant that day but it's it, it's going to be an exciting one yeah. uh, from a UCD perspective great point for them. Uh, and they might look back at this point at the end of the season it might be one that, that well, it might be too early to say whether they're going to be down the bottom but I think most people watching would, would say that um, mm. I think they'd be maybe have a little bit too much for the likes of Finn Harps and things like that uh, teams are along those lines I think they, they're, they're not because uh, they're not struggling to score goals um, I think they I think they could be okay yeah, well, they even got a goal against the Ferrugia, you got a goal against the you know what I mean? Um, scored against Bowes, scored against, it's like, do you know what I mean? That yeah, For, I think Ferrugia yeah. is a fantastic player, yeah. and so does Stephen Kenny. But it, my only worry for them is if, if some of their players get sold, they've got no one. Like, you don't know who they're going to bring in, as it seems to be just college students coming in, and so on. But uh, Just offer yeah. some... Uh, just offer some other team or some other player from another team in the league with a scholarship or something like that. Well, yeah, this is it, I suppose. But uh, then moving on, like lastly, yeah, Finn Harps and Sligo. It was finally an actual win that night. It was the only game where it was a win. Every other game was a draw. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Finn Harps, um, judging on tonight as well, the game that we are at as well, in regards to that, it's... Um, you kind of feel, you feel sorry for them a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, it, it's so it's so difficult for teams that come from the first division. Um, there's so many teams coming from the first division, even when they win the league. And um, they obviously they, they want to go up and, and test themselves and challenge in the Premier Division. But a lot of them, Make a statement. yeah, a lot of them, you know, you don't really get any money. Like the the FEI really give you, I think it's a couple of grand for winning the league. Which is not really ends up substantial to actually help you build any form of a team to stay up. There's no foundation there. And it's just so there's such a gap between the team that goes up and everyone else that you just you just go in the games just trying not to lose them, you know. Um it happens with so many teams to go draw have them a draw that and even the manager said at the end of the season he said, you know, we weren't really ready to go up. But obviously you want to test yourself, but um I know. I understand the first te- the first five game season. You know you're kind of going all out, trying the best you can. But I think the players will eventually start to get very frustrated and and very. Um, I think down in the fact that they're going to be going a lot of games sitting, tight, shuffling left to right. And if they go go down early, they're just spending the night just chasing shadows. Then like um, yeah, it could be not, a long season. If yeah, it know. could be a very long season. You know, um, especially when the manager's getting as as frustrated he is uh, when they're losing 3 0 and then getting kicked up kicked off into the st- into the stands. I what don't know. What is referring to is tonight at the Shannon Crawford's game. Yeah, 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 but and I think stuff like that can get quite, in the you crowd, know. to be fair to him. Yeah, and they're doing and obviously they're doing these very long journeys um into Dublin, mainly into Dublin where you know they're not getting results really so I think it could be a really, really long season for them. Um, and I kind of feel bad for I feel bad for most teams that finish first and that first one will come up because it's very, very difficult for them to stay up. Maybe the only team that could probably come up and, and have a foundation where they might actually stay up maybe would be Shells in terms of uh, a sleeping giant, you know what I mean? They, they go up and they've got a fan base there and um, a CEO and, and a board that really want to kind of push on. Keep, push on and keep them up there. Yeah. So. That's the only one I could see. Finn Harps as well, and uh, but, what what team likes going up to Donegal yeah. on a Friday night? You know? But for, from a from a Sligo point of view, yeah. uh, still getting used to life under Liam Buckley, coming from Pat. Um, but they they got two 0 up. Um, who are the goal scorers again? Parks and so Parks scored twenty nine minute, and then Toward scored uh, Toward uh, on the forty eight. So they went two 0 up, and then. Yeah, I don't think I've kind of got back into it. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't know very much about the game. I haven't seen. No. Uh, well, I've only seen Finn Harps tonight, but I no. haven't seen Sligo play this season to see 
um, anything about them. So, you know, again, a lot of teams are going to struggle going up to Valley Buffet to get results in mm-hmm. terms of uh, Finn Hafs. Like, they are compact. We've seen it in the second half. You know, they were like, shut up shop, right? We yeah. just try and keep it at 3 0. Whatever. They didn't really push forward. Yeah. But, you know, fair play to Sligo on that. You know, it's three points for them. And, yeah, uh, I don't really have a lot to say about what happened. No, I, I didn't see it either, no. Um, we haven't even had can't. a chance to really watch Soccer Republic tonight because no. we're only back. So, um, with the last game uh, we, we talked about then is, is, is um, Shamrock Raw versus Finn Harp. But we, we did an after match reaction, so just check that out. Um, and so Rowers go top of the league tonight uh, and call yeah, difference. So, yeah. uh, but we did an after match reaction, which we can you can check out. I'll put a link to it. Um, should be around here somewhere or there, um, and you can go check it out. But uh, that's been it for my final word shop. Um, have you anything to add there? Like, oh, don't forget to subscribe. Actually, yeah, that be might be the might be the main thing we want you to do yeah. because uh, I think we're around two fifty or less people to get us to 5k we want to achieve that before St. Patrick's Day so we've got a little over two weeks or a little under sorry um, so if you could please do that don't forget to like the video uh, don't forget to stay tuned on Thursday we'll be at the press conference for Mickey McCarty to announce his first team as Republic of Ireland manager yeah. and um, uh, usually be at the games on Friday uh, Pats and, and Rovers um, so stay tuned Thursday and Friday for, for those before the international break and then um, yeah I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Yeah.